Today I'll break down the weapons, star cards, and tactics that you'll need to wreak havoc and destruction on enemy infantry, vehicles, and heroes with the Heavy class on this edition of the Battlefront Survival Guide. First, let's talk about the three main abilities of the Heavy class. First is the Impact Grenade, which detonates immediately on impact. Next is the Combat Shield, which adds an extra layer of protection to the front, but limits movement. Third is the Sentry, a high damage rotary cannon with limited mobility, which also reduces explosive damage to you and your allies within the radius of the ability. In addition to the era-specific default weapons, there are four additional weapons which can be earned through gameplay. The first is the DC-15 LE, which has similar stats as the default Republic weapon with a slightly faster fire rate. The attachments are reduced recoil, improved zoom, and an exploding shot. I would never use the improved zoom as the heavy class is best in shorter range engagements. The exploding shot increases overheat and while providing a bit of extra splash damage can be dangerous when hitting targets close to you as you will also be affected by the splash damage. Not much, but it's something to be careful with. Next is the FWB-10K, it's the default weapon of the First Order with a slightly lower fire rate but more damage. The attachments include auto cooling, night vision, and ion shot. Now I will always have auto cooling equipped because while other weapons will produce overheat until you activate the flush, letting off the trigger of this weapon will begin to reduce heat. The night vision can be useful on night maps at range, but the only map I might use it on is Endor, and even then with all the cover, it's not that viable. Ion shot is great if you are taking a lot of damage from vehicles and turrets and need to take them out, but only if you want to focus on that. The TL-50 has a high rate of fire, but a high spread. It's good for close quarters in its native state. The attachments include improved cooling, reduced spread, and secondary fire. The secondary fire is like having a grenade launcher, but it's not as valuable as the other attachments. The improved cooling reduces overheat, while reduced spread makes it more accurate. This is a great short-range weapon and the primary weapon for most heavy class users, but has a large damage falloff at range, so use something else if you like to stand back a little further. The T-21 is the newest blaster for the heavy added in the February update. It has the slowest rate of fire, but the highest damage, and it is an absolute cannon. The attachments include a scope, improved handling, and burst mode. These attachments make the T-21 an extremely versatile weapon. With the scope and improved handling, it's about as good as the Assault Class EL-16 HFE at range. It's almost a sniper rifle. With the improved handling and burst mode, one solid hit in the shoulder and neck area and head will one-shot all classes but the heavy, and all three in the head will one-shot heavies. For a lot of short-range engagements, I would run only burst mode, because the improved handling does reduce damage a little bit. At medium ranges, I would add the improved handling for better control, and if you want to play at longer range, run the scope with improved handling. Now let's talk about the star cards. Each class can equip three of these cards, which grant certain boosts or other weapons and equipment to your soldier. The boost cards for the heavy class include Defender, where you receive a small amount of points for each hit you take, up to a maximum of nine. Brawler, where you receive health on a melee kill up to a maximum of 100. Bodyguard reduces damage from explosions and toxins to a maximum of 40%. Marksman means any time you defeat an enemy with a headshot, it instantly cools your weapon and reduces the amount of overheat until the next time by up to a maximum of 40%. Resourceful gives your abilities a shorter recharge time up to a maximum reduction of 28%. Bounty Hunter increases battle points gain up to a maximum of 20%. Expert Weapons Handling increases the duration of your weapon cooling success state when you activate the cooling flush in the gold area up to 66% longer. Survivalist shortens health regeneration delay by up to 40%. Now for the ability cards. Replacing the Impact Grenade is the Improved Impact Grenade, which decreases recharge time and upgrades increase the blast radius up to a maximum of 6 meters. The Ion Torpedo is a tracking missile that damages vehicles, starfighters, and turrets. Upgrades decrease recharge time down to 25 seconds.
The detonite charge, which is a manual explosive, means you plant it and then you detonate it when an enemy approaches, upgrades increased blast radius up to 6 meters. Replacing the combat shield is the improved combat shield, with faster recharge with additional health and upgrades increase it up to 300. The barrage is a 3 grenade launcher at single fire, upgrades reduce the recharge time to 32 seconds. And the ion turret, which automatically fires at vehicles and other turrets, the recharge time decreases down to 13 seconds. And replacing the sentry are three different types of sentry, all providing extra resistance to explosives to yourself and allies within the radius, plus your health regeneration starts on activation. First you have the mobile sentry, which allows you to move more freely but you deal less damage. The supercharged sentry, which adds explosive damage to each shot with a shorter active time. And finally, Explosive Sentry, which features a high explosive projectile and a slow rate of fire, and it doesn't allow you to move while firing. Upgrades decrease recharge time for all three to 18 seconds. Now for the tactics and strategies. Your primary function is as a bullet sponge and doing high damage. Much like the Assault class, you want to do as much damage as possible, but not just to infantry. Playing defense in Galactic Assault means you have to be ready to fire on the walker or tank every time it is vulnerable. This should be your primary objective during the early stage of the game. Playing as the attacking team means you are trying to discourage the defenders from firing on the vehicle or clear the enemy from the capture zone. You can either play at or around the objective or play at a distance and lob ordnance at the enemy players. If you can position yourself in the capture zone and keep the enemy at range with your sentry cannon or barrage, you enable the assault class to do their job, which is to get kills before the enemy can reach the objective. Use star cards situationally. As with any class, your star card loadout will vary based on your playstyle, game mode, and map. If you're playing at or near the objective, then perhaps improved impact grenade and improved combat shield will prove most effective to hold it down. If there are a lot of choke points, supercharged sentry is an effective way to deal a lot of damage to a lot of enemies. If you're shooting an objective at a distance, explosive sentry can be a nice way to repel or clear out the enemy team, but beware, there's a lot of projectile drop, so it will take some practice to be accurate. Improved combat shield is also useful when playing in choke points or corridors. When guarding doors or objectives, use the detonite charge to get some easy kills. Bodyguard and Survivalist are both very helpful cards, as playing the objective renders one vulnerable to a lot of explosive damage, and the Heavy class has the slowest health regeneration. If you want to rank up quickly, or play as vehicles, reinforcements, or heroes, then use Defender, Bounty Hunter, and Improved Combat Shield, because you'll get score for damage done to your shield as well. Is your team taking abuse at the hands of an annoying tank or starfighter? Equip the FWB-10K with Ion Shot and grab the Ion Torpedo and Ion Turret to become a veritable tank killer. Damage Enemy Heroes One of the important things for the Heavy is to try and do as much damage on enemy heroes as possible to help keep the rest of your team alive. The DC-15LE with Exploding Shot is a great weapon to use because even if enemy heroes block, they still take splash damage from the explosive. Hitting enemy heroes in the back while they attack someone else is the best strategy. If you stay out of melee range and hit them from some distance, you will do a good amount of damage, shortening their time on the battlefront. With my personal loadout, I used to try and play as heroes every game, so Bounty Hunter was always a mainstay in my loadout. These days though, as I tend to play more reinforcements, my loadout will change periodically. I will usually always play with improved impact grenade and barrage, but barrage often does little to no damage. However, a perfectly placed barrage in tight quarters is quite satisfying. I would say to get the best use of the heavy's natural abilities, improved impact grenade, improved combat shield, and supercharged sentry is the way to go. I might switch supercharged sentry out for survivalist just because of the regeneration delay, and if I'm trying to play the objective as long as possible, I'll switch out the combat shield for bodyguard. The best mode to level up quickly, especially as a beginner or casual player, is supremacy. First, area capture objectives are the easiest to play because all you have to do is be in the zone. You will gain more points and XP and get bonuses for kills while in the objective zone. 
Supremacy rounds last the longest of any mode, so you will very naturally get more kills and more XP. Plus, with enemy AI bots, you will win more 1v1 scenarios. With the advent of co-op mode, it is now a great option for leveling up your classes and heroes. You still earn XP and credits, and fighting waves of enemies really teaches you how to play situationally. Do damage to enemy vehicles and heroes as much as possible, and focus on any destructible objectives. These gain more points than against infantry, so keep that in mind. My favorite is on crate, grabbing the ion disruptor, shooting the walkers, and unloading my sentry. You will gain more battle points and more XP on that map alone in Galactic Assault than any other place. Lastly, keep an eye out for double and triple XP events. You will level up so much faster if you play more during those periods. Follow the Battlefront Survival Guide on Twitter at BattlefrontSG, as well as EA Star Wars to keep abreast of these events. Remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to make sure you receive more news and analysis such as this. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link in the channel description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.